What's going on everyone? We got some updates in regards to what the Lakers plans are for this offseason. We'll get the easy one out of the way. Uh, plan A is to get Austin Reeves and Rui Hachimura to resign. Makes a world of sense. We don't need to go into this too much. Uh, look, they are part of the young core. Uh, the Lakers were a plus 16 and a half when these two with LeBron James and Anthony Davis were on the court. Makes all the sense in the world. They're not going to lose Rui Hachimura. They're not going to lose Austin Reeves. Hopefully they can get them both for a reasonable price. That's the big question is how much is it going to cost the Lakers? Because depending on how much they have to pay for these two could depend on how much flexibility they have in this offseason going forward, uh, maybe making moves. Uh, the Lakers do plan on going all in. At this point, they're looking and actively looking to try to make a trade for the 17th pick, Malik Beasley, Mo Bamba, and trying to find some deal that can upgrade the Lakers roster, get a starting level player, that's the goal. So definitely look forward to the Lakers doing that. As far as D'Angelo Russell goes, um, it looks like based on recent reports, the Lakers are looking in talks with him to front load a potential contract for the first two years. So that doesn't necessarily mean that he'll sign for two years, but let's say they sign him for four years, $80 million, right? What they would do is the first two years, he would get like $25 million a year. And then the last two years, that would drop to like $15 million a year. So it would kind of be the opposite of what Austin Reeves very likely could get. So Austin Reeves could get what, we, uh, what you call a poison pill contract, which is first two years are $12 million each. And then the last two years are like $27 million each, right? That's what a poison pill contract. The last two years or last year, are super backloaded, right? Well, the Lakers are looking to do the opposite with D'Angelo Russell, and the first two years would be loaded. The last two years would really, like, sort of decline and in price. Now, this is actually very smart, makes a world of sense for the Lakers, because the Lakers are basically going to have a hefty uh, salary cap right now, right? Because you're going to have to re-sign Austin Reeves, Rui Hachimura, you got LeBron James, you got Anthony Davis, uh, you're going to try to get some other players and stuff like that. You're going to re-sign D'Angelo Russell, maybe they get Chris Paul, we'll touch on that in a minute because there is an update for that. All of these things, right? But LeBron James, at most, so far, only has two years left, right? He has this year coming up, and then he has a player option for the following year. Same thing with Anthony Davis. Their timelines kind of line up. Well, D'Angelo Russell would actually fit that timeline as far as the hefty contract. So, yes, he gets $25 million the first two years, but when he starts getting into that $15 million, LeBron James is very likely either going to retire or go play with his son. You figure out what you're going to do with Anthony Davis. But now you have all this flexibility. So instead of him getting, uh, say, you know, again, 25, uh, let's say 15 million, 17 million, 23 million, 27 million, you know, the, the incremental type of contract over four years. No, he'd get the heavy load, the big amount right in the front and then it would start trickling down. So when LeBron falls off the books, you have his $50 million coming off, and then you have like $20 million of D'Angelo Russell's salary coming off, or $15 million of his uh, salary coming off. So now you have, you know, basically $95 million in cap space that has fallen off. Now, that doesn't mean that they'll have $95 million to spend, but it allows them to get some flexibility, such as using their full mid-level exception, uh, signing a free agent. Uh, depending on how everything shapes up, they could have another max salary spot to kind of fill in and replace LeBron James with another star. It just gives them a lot of flexibility. I actually really like that idea. But they also could still trade D'Angelo Russell, especially if they get Chris Paul. So, we do have some new Chris Paul updates. Now, so far, the trade hasn't happened, right? So the Clippers are trying to trade for Chris Paul. There was reports today that the Golden State Warriors were also trying to trade for Chris Paul. Uh, obviously, that fell through. Kind of interested as to why they would want to do that for one and two, um, why they would, uh, what they would offer in a trade like that. Uh, also, it only makes sense if Chris Paul was going to accept like a bench roll. So would he have done that? Maybe that's why that trade didn't go through. The Clippers, uh, based on reports, have been actively trying to trade for Chris Paul. So far, at least at the time of recording this video, it has yet to happen. So if it hasn't happened yet, my guess is it's probably not going to happen. Um, I fully believe that Chris Paul, if he gets waived, he's going to Lakers. 
but there is the possibility of him maybe going elsewhere, right? Uh, you, Two things are going to happen with him and the Wizards. They're either going to waive him or they're going to trade him. My thing is that like, if they were going to trade him, it probably would have already happened, right? Because especially with the Clippers, because the Clippers trade is very straightforward. We don't have really any assets. We will give you a bunch of expiring contracts and we'll probably give you like a second round pick or two and we'll take Chris Paul, right? Like it kind of feels like a really straightforward done deal thing, but maybe it still happens. If he doesn't happen and he doesn't get traded, I fully believe he's going to Lakers. Now, maybe the Clippers know Chris Paul's coming, right? Maybe, uh, you know, because that's what it boils down to. Does Chris Paul want to go to the Clippers? If he wants to go to the Clippers, or even if he's like, it's not my preferred destination, but I don't mind it, then I feel like the deal would have already happened. It would have already been done, right? Trade him. There you go. You get to go to where you want, right? So something tells me he really doesn't want to go to the Clippers, or he said, let them waive me, keep the depth, and I'll sign with you guys once I get waived. That could be a possibility too. But at that point, I think he just goes to the Lakers. Because I think he goes, plays with LeBron. Uh, It makes sense for him. It makes sense for the Lakers. The Lakers could use him. But if they do get him, then I really think that they trade D'Angelo Russell. right? But there are talks about them wanting to keep D'Lo and Chris Paul. But also wanting thinking about keeping Schroeder and Chris Paul and having that kind of be their point guard rotation. Um, Either way, I don't think it's a huge deal. Like... I think D'Lo gives you a little more flexibility. You don't get the defense, but he played off the ball really well. So you could play him alongside Chris Paul. Schroeder and Chris Paul, I feel like might be a little awkward at times, but you never know. It could work. Uh, Lakers plan A, based on the recent reports, is to sign Chris Paul. Plan A is Chris Paul and uh, Austin Reeves, Rui Hachimura. That's their plan A. That is what they want to kind of work out uh, as far as free agent signings. And, I mean, of course, they'll sign other free agents, but very likely the vet minimum deal. So that kind of tells me that they're probably going to give Chris Paul the taxpayer mid-level, is my guess. And then they look to move their picks with Beasley, Mo Bamba, all of that stuff, and go all in and try to win an NBA championship this year. Because if you have Chris Paul, you have LeBron James, you have Anthony Davis, you're going all in. Right? The Lakers are going to make that push. They have a window. They were just in the Western Conference Finals. You're adding Chris Paul. You don't have three to four years to try to like play around and figure out, you know, what do we need to win a chip? No, you got to go for it now. So if you're going for it now, then you trade Beasley, you trade Mo Bamba, you probably trade D'Lo. Unless you, if you just can't find a deal for D'Lo, then keep him. Um, but if you can find a deal, then trade him upgrade the roster, go get some quality pieces, and now you're off to the races, hopefully contending for a championship. If the Lakers get Chris Paul, I really love the idea of getting Buddy Heald and Miles Turner. Like, having a starting five of, like, say, Chris Paul, Reeves, LeBron, AD, and Turner, I think would be really good, right? You'd have defense, you'd have balance. Um, You know, LeBron and Chris Paul would be the weak links defensively, but I think you'd have enough rim protection and Chris Paul's still good at funneling the defender or and all of that uh LeBron he can lock in when he needs to or when he wants to and Austin Reeves can play some defense uh so I I do like that idea but I just think regardless you gotta go all in right if you get Chris Paul and you land Chris Paul like you that's it you have to push your chips to the table you have to try to go for a championship now Chris Paul's only getting older Good thing is about Chris Paul, and the reason I don't mind the signing is I think one, he'll help Anthony Davis tremendously. I think you'll see a lot less of those just bad offensive AD games. Uh, Also, yes, he's had a bit of injury issues, but he's been pretty solid as far as games played the last three years. Uh, He had that finals run where he was good, right? So maybe he could replicate that, but also on the Lakers, He wouldn't have to play 35 to 40 minutes a game. He wouldn't have to be the second option on the Lakers. He would kind of just be the third, fourth, fifth option. He could just come in, give us 10 and 10. You know, that's all we need. Just give us 10 points, 10 rebounds, or 10 assists, and we're good, right? As always, this is a discussion, so I pass the question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. What do you think of this news? Uh, what do you think about the Lakers potentially landing Chris Paul? Do you love it? Do you hate it? I know a lot of people are kind of mixed on it. Uh, the Austin Reeves, Rui Hachimura thing, like I said, is pretty straightforward, pretty obvious. Uh, but the d thing I thought was pretty interesting, and I actually really like that idea. I think that that's a, a great idea for the future flexibility of this team. 
Uh, but do you feel the same way? Uh, however you feel, whatever your thoughts are, good, bad, ugly, somewhere between, let me know down in the comments.